There's a pretty one, Ulysses. Hello, BookTube. I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Here I am with a short review of a biography of my favorite writer, Barbara Pym. Barbara Pym, A Passionate Force by Anne Allistry. As the author bio on the inside back flap tells us, Anne Allistry is a pseudonym for a journalist named Penelope Ann Craig. And I don't know if we needed to know this, but she is a descendant of Dr. Richard Allistry, author and provost of Eton in the 17th century, good friend of the diarist John Evelyn. I love this so much, but probably mostly because I am so fascinated by Barbara Pym. I don't think this is the place to start with Barbara Pym biographies. The canonical, the seminal, the, the go-to biography is by Barbara Pym's friend, Hazel Holt. It's called A Lot to Ask, and I read it a year ago, and it was really good. Hazel Holt was her colleague at the Anthropological Institute in London, where Barbara Pym worked for decades, and Hazel Holt herself became a writer and penned Barbara Pym's, it wasn't an authorized biography because it wasn't published until after Barbara Pym died in 1980. But this is the second biography that I've read. Uh, even though I think the Hazel Holt is a place to start, if you are even half as infatuated with Barbara Pym as I am, this is well worth your time. Anne Allistry is a enigmatic writer, and rather than... She does tell basically the chronological life story, but the chapters are short and grouped kind of thematically. So, for example, there's a chapter on the churches of Barbara Pym's novels and her personal biographical connection to those churches. And the way that Alistry talks about the novels Pym writes, that doesn't necessarily flow chronologically, whereas I th seem to remember that it did more in the Hazel Holt biography. But I sank into this and just adored it. There is stuff in here that wasn't in Hazel Holt. I'll talk about that maybe in a minute. And I would have to say that Anne Alistry, a.k.a. Penelope Craig, often has kind of a non-sequitur style of writing in some of her sentences. Can I find one quickly? Uh, here's an example where I just kind of went, huh? The very instances with which Pym had just concurred for her future cut and thrust copy. I googled those words to see if there was an idiom I was missing, and if you know what that means, please leave me a comment below. But, but there would probably be a total of a dozen of those in this 150-page biography. So it wasn't a big flaw in the book. But for the most part, it was just absolutely delightful. It's written almost like magazine article participant observation style. And Anne Allistry met Barbara Pym's sister, Hillary. So Barbara Pym died in 1980. Hillary lived for quite a few more years after that. And Anne Allistry met her and she writes about her as if she's writing a magazine article. So you just see her walking into Hillary Pym's living room and sitting down for tea and what they said to each other. And I love that. I have an autographed copy of Hillary Pym's Barbara Pym cookbook. Thanks again, Britta. And Hillary tells this biographer that their Barbara and her father, Frederick Crampton Pym, was illegitimate. That definitely wasn't in the Hazel Holt biography. And in fact, she's explaining that this family secret didn't come out until after Barbara's death. There's just a lot of little things like that that if you are as fascinated by Barbara as I am, that were just incredible. This is just kind of a cornucopia of wonderful anecdotes and information about Barbara and for that it's well worth your time. She and Hillary made a bilious looking lime green milk jelly and that sounds pretty awful and then they named it Mashler Pudding. Why Mashler Pudding? It was named after Tom Mashler, her editor at Cape, who rejected her novel, sending her into the literary wilderness for 16 or 17 years in the early 1960s. Mashler pudding. <laughs> she covers a lot of the same ground as Hazel Holt does, 
both of them do quite a nice job of tracing the literary influences on Barbara Pym and who Barbara Pym read in her middle age and into her elder years. From the Hazel Holt biography, I read Charlotte Young, Barbara Pym's favorite writer, and that was a big success. And I tried my first Ivy Compton Burnett a few months ago. That didn't go well. And then I find in this biography that it didn't go well for P Barbara Pym either, and she had to try and try with maybe different novels before she really could get Ivy Compton Burnett. And at the end of her life, she cites Compton Burnett as one of the uh, influences on her writing. So I will not give up on Ivy because of what I read in here. And uh, one of her friends, a gay British writer who lived most of his adult life in Greece, I want to say, maybe Mykonos, their correspondence was quoted a lot in both biographies, and I found out that Liddell wrote a literary critical study of Elizabeth Taylor and Ivy Compton Burnett, and I struggled at the first Elizabeth Taylor novel I read, I loved, and everything else I've read, I've hated. So I'm not given up on Eliz either. Elizabeth and Ivy. It was very moving in both biographies to read about Barbara Pym emerging out of that literary wilderness thanks to genuine and complimentary public comments by her friend Philip Larkin and others in the late 1970s that she was the most underrated British novelist of the mid to late 20th century and that just she suddenly just burst on the scene people were suddenly rediscovering her jonathan cape brought all of her books back into print and all the novels that she'd been working on and had had rejected by countless publishers in the 1960s were brought into print and she was nominated for a booker prize here is a lovely picture the only color picture i found of her from the booker ceremony and it's a lovely picture, and she didn't live very long after that. I found the description of her illness and death here. There was something more personal about it. Or maybe I've just fallen that my, my voice is breaking. Or maybe I've just fallen that much more in love with Barbara Pym in the interim. But when I put this book down after finishing it and reflecting on the happiness that she found as a very sensual, sexual, impish, creative, talented person who never found love in the conventional sense, never had a long-term relationship, and never got married, and was just ignored by her culture, and then rediscovered by her culture, and then got so sick and died so suddenly. I just... <sighs> I felt the passion and the force of her life in a way that I, I'm not even going to try to articulate, but this is quite something. I think if you don't know anything about Barbara Pym and you don't already care about her or her novels, this may not be a book for you, but if, like me, you are a devotee, treat yourself. Thanks for watching.